What was your first introduction to Julia Child? I had seen the cooking shows when I was a kid, and um, uh, I was familiar with her. And then over time, just from Dan Aykroyd, I guess, she that became... That was my first... Yeah. That's most young people. That's their first introduction to her. But she really did transform cooking in our country. I mean, it was really sort of appalling <laughs> what everybody was eating. What do you feel that love and food have in common? There's something about the kitchen. We know that. When you build a house, you have a nice living room, and no one ever goes in it because they're all crowded around the counter. In the kitchen, there's something about preparing food for other people that makes people happy, makes them feel happy to be where that's happening. I think it's primal. It goes way, way, way back into our vestigial past. You know, and um, so I think feeding each other is a gesture of love. Tell me about the moment you were at Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah. You were in Sonora. Well, I don't remember that. I mean, she remembers <laughs> it. I don't remember it at all. I, <laughs> she, because she was thinking about it because she was preparing this thing and writing it. She was deep into the research of Julia and everything. Uh, Julie Powell's book uh, but I guess she saw me at the park and said and I said what are you doing and she said I'm doing Julia a movie about Julie Powell Julie Julia Child and I said oh anything for me in it <laughs> so, shamelessly trolling for work and uh, it worked that's such a big difference you're five six Julie was six two was it hard to adapt to that height well, I felt that her, her height <clears throat> was an important part of how people reacted to her. Not, not once she became famous, because I think that was sort of an enhancement of, of the sizable person that, that she was, personality that she was. But I think it probably formed her as a young girl to shoot up to that height. Um, it, it formed a lot of things to, to be that height in the uh, in the 40s, where everybody was dainty and small, and it uh, and in a class of women who whose aspiration was to marry well, and that was a career choice. That she it probably her height probably had a lot to do with steering her on a wilder course to go to Washington to try to work in this overseas. Uh, enterprise in, in China with the early uh, version of the OSS, early version of the CIA. What happened when you're reading the script and you're thinking, oh, my gay best friend from Devil's Wear Prada, Devil Wears Prada, <laughs> Stanley Tucci should play my husband, Paul. I've been so fond of him for, uh, as an actor, director, in person, we, we often um, co-captain a charades team at Christmas time and actually we're the opposite teams. We're, you know, at each other's throats at that game. It's supposed to be fun, but it's really for blood. And um, <laughs> so I really, I, I knew him and I really wanted to work with him again. I thought he was great. But if you look at pictures of Paul Child, he looks, um, Stanley looks quite a bit like him. And Stanley has an urbanity and a, a real sophistication, um, and he has just deep masculine charm, which is a, a, a thing you, you can't act. You have it or you don't. Really don't. And um, he has that. So I thought he'd be perfect. You know how someone springs right in front of your mind when you read it. What do you feel that love and food have in common? And they're both necessities. Necessities of life. Yeah. Was it odd, you know, she's 5'6", yeah. Julia Child's 6'2", was it odd to see her at that height? Oh God, it was so funny, because of all the little things you have to go through, you know, through the big, you know, heels that she's wearing, and then on platforms, so we had to sort of navigate around these platforms. Is there something that you learned about Meryl on this film that you found surprising, like, oh, I didn't know that? She's even better than I thought, which I didn't think really possible, yeah. Tell me about that onion scene. Heaps funny. of onions. Yeah. Did your eyes get all teary -eyed? Uh, a little bit at one point, yes. But luckily, I didn't get quite as close as she did. She was right there on top of me. Being in a movie with Meryl Streep, Stanley Tucci, and Amy Adams is... Uh, How many times have you said that to yourself? It's a dream, yeah. <laughs> I keep 
kind of pinching myself, you know, and, and, and wondering and how, how I got to be so lucky to end up with this. We had an amazing time. I mean, the food was incredible. I probably gained about say, maybe 10 pounds, and then afterwards gained another. I have an eating disorder right now. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, but we had a great, we had a great chef, and um, there was one, there was one time where I ate 36 bruschettas in a row, Kidding. in a row. The first six were really good, delicious. Delicious. Then seven or eight, they put a. Uh, a bucket next to me in case I had to throw Did up. Did you ever get to the point where you're like, okay, look, Nora, I can't eat anymore. Yes. Baby's got to stop eating. Yes, I did that. She screamed from the other room, Robert De Niro would do it. Oh, and oh. And I just, I kept going. I kept going. I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right, Robert De Niro would do it. But what do you want people to walk away with? Well, I hope they walk away hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, if they don't walk away hungry, we got a problem. And uh, I, I hope they have a... Uh, a, a better understanding of Julia Child. Some of, maybe the people in my generation are, are younger that didn't know much about the it. The Julia Child before Dan Aykroyd. Exactly. I hope they, they check in and, and understand what a huge inspiration she was. You know?